YouTube has continued to attack alternative media by demonetizing most of our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit our Amazon store or our Patreon page. Links below. So this is one I, I thought would be interesting to kind of talk about here because this is, again, Star Wars stuff. Uh, looking over at, uh, at one of the biggest things with Star Wars The Last Jedi was, of course, the revelation of who Rey's parents were. Uh, we all thought that they were going to be legacy characters, or at least in some way related to legacy characters, as was basically emphasized during the Maz Katana scene in The Force Awakens. And as we learned from watching this movie, that did not happen. <laughs> It was totally, totally different how that whole thing went down. And it really bothered a lot of people. Again, this kind of leads into the whole backlash uh, regarding the movie and what went down. But race parents are, are definitely something that is going to basically be on the retcon uh, board for episode nine. You can tell because even Ryan Johnson has basically come out and said like they could change who the parents were. That uh, that Snoke was in fact lying to, to Kylo when he uh, showed him that vision. Um, but Ryan Johnson wanted to chime in on this because obviously it's his movie and, and I'd like to get a, a bit more info into what he's thinking as a result simply because um, you know, I think the, the one, one of the biggest problems from the, this movie is faced ultimately, in my opinion, is that there's been a lack of communication from the creator to the audience in regards to the changes that were made. And ultimately that's not something that is necessarily needed, I think in most cases. However, one of the biggest problems the last Jedi had was that it told you it didn't show you, which is weird because it's this two and a half hour long multi hundred million dollar epic space opera sort of thing. So you figure they would be showing a lot, but they didn't. They just told you about it and expected you to take it as truth. I mean, they really invoked listen and believe, which is uh, kind of sad when it comes to a movie because movies shouldn't shouldn't do that. You know, they, they, they should never do that, but they kind of did here quite a bit. Uh, and so when it comes to race parentage, Ryan Johnson says, here. It was hinted at in episode seven when Maz says the answers lay ahead, not behind, but it was something that was obviously still on Ray's mind and the audience's mind. It felt like a powerful thing that she was still holding on to this notion of the past defining her. And I guess I was entirely looking at it from a perspective of what would be the thing that would be the most difficult for her to hear? The easiest thing for her to hear would be, yes, you are so-and-so and so-and-so's -so daughter, or yes, here's where you fit into this. Here's the answer. The tougher thing to hear is you're going to have to stand on your own two feet. You're going to have to figure out what you're worth in this world yourself. Your place in the story is not going to be handed to you. You're going to have to find it. That to me was the most interesting and toughest thing for Ray, which look, to be fair, he's not wrong. He's not wrong in terms of a storytelling perspective, right? You want proper character development. You want a proper character to go through the trials and tribulations. But at the same time, when you deal with Star Wars, you're looking at this from a hero's journey perspective. That was Luke's story. It's ultimately been even Anakin's story, just more a tragedy than a hero's journey. And as a result of that, you figure that going into this next trilogy, it would continue the efforts, considering the fact that Star Wars is ultimately cyclical. We know this based upon how many things keep kind of repeating themselves over this over the course of time but i get what ryan johnson here is trying to say he wants it to her journey to be something that is wholly unique to her and i get that and ultimately we saw that too with with kylo ren we saw kylo and it's kind of the opposite storyline if you will like kylo's coming from he you know he is uh, the lineage of legacy characters he is ben you know solo he is the son of, uh, of Princess Leia Organa or, or General Organa or whatever you want to call her. Uh, he is the nephew of Luke Skywalker, the fabled last Jedi that stopped Darth Vader and the Emperor and ended the Empire's reign. You know, this is a lot of weight on his shoulders. You could call him, I mean, to be fair, you could almost sit there and use the verb like he was being somewhat privileged, like this, is, this was his life and he wanted to be trained by his uncle who thought he could then use him to maybe balance out the force even more um, and, and then, you know, uh, restore order, so to speak. And it failed because Snoke was able to come in and touch upon the darkness that I do believe lays in everyone's soul. And that was one of the things that was exemplified in the movie uh, or it, it made an example of in the movie when Luke went to Kylo's tent or hut, whatever you want to call it, uh, and that whole incident played out. Ultimately, uh, it was touching upon the darkness that resides in every single person. And it's not always good versus evil. There's always shades of gray, which is kind of where I think Luke fell into the whole gray Jedi thing that ultimately ended up being a nothing burger, even though there were tons of theories as a result of this. And we saw tons of these theories pop up or in the two years between episode seven and episode eight, which is probably one of the reasons why people were super upset because they in fact thought 
they in fact thought that she was going to be someone of a legacy. And like I said, that was met with such negativity. That was met with a lot of hatred that ultimately, even though Ryan Johnson did not want her journey to have that handed to her at that point in time, uh, it's entirely possible that J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio will do that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they decide that uh, that they want uh, to go through and uh, and very much tackle that subject matter themselves. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they want to change it. But uh, we have until uh, 20, what, 2019, December 2019, until... Uh, until we get to see it. So anything could happen until then. But if I'm being honest, I kind of want them to change it up. I, I know I shouldn't, as as from, from being a writer uh, and a person who likes good character development, I shouldn't want Rey to be legacy. I shouldn't want her to have something to do with that. But at the time, even when episode four came out in 1977, Luke himself was not a legacy character. He was, he was brought into it. And uh, hopefully... Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, to get some answers that that don't come across as being pandering, and don't come across as being kind of shoehorned in uh, for the sake of, I guess, character diversity is kind of what it feels like here.